Hey everybody, this is Adam Broad of Liberation for Public Eye, brought to you by the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm super excited to be here with you guys today, and uh, hopefully for a very, very long time, uh, assuming I don't get locked up in a gulag or uh, get carted off and, and murdered in the streets for being uh, someone who actually wants to control his own life, who believes in the non-aggression principle. Uh, we'll get into some of that a little bit later. Uh, just wanted to use this video to give you a little bit of background about who I am, uh, the stories that I plan to focus on, and the, the concepts I plan to focus on, which is ironically what 99.99% .99 of this whole network is all about. Uh, just giving you a little uh, Texan Missouri spin on it from somebody who is a, still a recovering statist. Uh, I've been in remission for many, many years now. Well, many years, about five years now. Uh, but I still still feel kind of dirty about it for having believed the lies for so long. So, this show tends to be focused on economic ideas, debunking government myths, and exposing statism in its many forms. Like I said, this follows all the same shows, so I hope to put a, a unique idea behind it, uh, a younger perspective than maybe some of the other hosts on, on this network. Uh, but we'll see how that goes, and we'll see if you guys enjoy my content enough. You know, let the free market of the internet work. Uh, so, you know, I plan to have my show range anywhere from 30 minutes to 2 hours. Depends on how much knowledge I have on a particular subject, what kind of guest I've got on, how willing they are to talk, and you know who I can actually get to interact uh, with me on these shows. And I plan to do some of the Google Plus Hangouts live at some point in the near future. Uh, but life is kind of crazy right now with all kinds of personal things, shenanigans going on. Uh, but we'll deal with that, and I'll come in strong as best as I can. So... Here's a little bit of backstory on me. For years of my childhood, I was a blindly follow the family rules uh, and the family views kind of guy. This meant that since my dad was in the Air Force and my dad was training to become a pastor uh, towards the latter half of my young childhood, uh, I was a war supporting, big commie hating, neo conservative, proudly saluting the flag boy scout who was singing the loudest with the national anthem every time it popped on anywhere. And I would say that Pledge of Allegiance so proud. <laughs> it's it's sickening to think, you know how bad I was back then. Uh, so I, you know, I was very conservative leaning. I was listening to Rush Limbaugh when my parents had it on the radio. You know, I was a you know a big Reagan conservative as much as I understood about that. All I knew was Reagan good, everyone else bad. Jefferson good, everyone else bad. Lincoln good, he freed the slaves. Awesome. Kennedy died young, kind of a shithead. Great, whatever. This bush is going to be awesome. And again, my dad being in the Air Force, he was stationed overseas quite a bit. He did uh, Kuwait. He did Korea. Uh, and I wouldn't see him for months at a time. Uh, granted, I was very young, and I was on, on base, and my mother, uh, you know, God love her, she's been so fantastic. She's been a, a very good uh, support for me in, in my whole life. And I never really felt abandoned by my father. I never did. He, and he's always been there you know, ever since he retired. Uh, many years ago. So anyways, years went by and 9-11 happened. So we can all pretty well remember where we were that day. I was around nine years old and was pulled from recess, which really fucking pissed me off. I mean, I was sent home with a note and you know, I was gonna have recess, but we all were told that we couldn't go outside. That uh, We have to just go home, have our parents pick us up, and and that's it. And there would be a note explaining it all later, and they wanted Mom and Dad to tell us exactly what happened. They didn't want to break the news to us. So when I got home, I had one of my friend's parents pick me up, because Dad was out and about, and Mom, I don't know what she was doing. She was busy at work or something, and probably got sent home early as well. Um, so when I got home, my parents were glued to the TV, watching all the footage, all the replays of, of the towers being struck, of, of the Pentagon, and, and everything else that was going on complete tragedy. Me being the young, you know, ignorant kid, I was like, oh cool, is that a new movie coming out? That's gonna be so awesome, I wanna see that. Well, my parents said, well, no. And they said, well, men from the Middle East hated our freedom so much that they decided to attack the World Trade Centers in New York and hit the Pentagon as well. Well, my mother raised me right as a New York Yankees fan. Uh, my next thought was, oh my god, are the Yankees alright? Are we going to have our game tonight? Mom said, no, <laughs> there's no game tonight. 
there's nothing going on at all tonight anymore. Everything's shut down. Uh, but everybody should be fine, blah, 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 reassured me, the usual uh, motherly type stuff whenever there's you know, these kind of events going on. So I started watching, watching what was going on, watched the footage. And what struck me as odd was why was it that if a group of people hated us so much, why did they not focus on the Capitol building, the White House, uh, and other major D.C. area type monuments? It was just weird to me. I mean, the Washington Monument you know, and all those, you would think that those would be the first things to go. The World Trade Center? I didn't even know what the hell that was. And then I come to find out about uh, Tower 7 down the line, and we can get into that later. But I was young, somewhat skeptical as to why things happened the way they did. But, you know, followed in, locked, lock, stock, and barrel. Just locked right in, believed the narrative for a while, and moved on with my life. Five years later, we kicked off the final years of Bush. And the high school I attended started to talk about the upcoming elections in our history and government courses. While this was going on, a project was assigned to us to dig up little-known facts about the, the Bush administration and to research, the can research a candidate for the 2008 election. Now, with my school being a very conservative, Republican, uh, parochial school, uh, they were not looking for dirt. They were just, you know, saying, hey, George Bush signed this little known piece of legislation for this reason, or went and visited these people and had a dinner with these guys, or he played a round of golf on this day and he shot such and such. You know, something meaningless. That's what all my friends brought forth. But I got reading. And I got reading into what happened on 9-11, because I wanted to see if there was any little-known facts about that, things that you don't hear every day. That brought me uh, to hitting some pretty heavy stuff, but I didn't think much of it. I took a break on the wonderful world of YouTube, which you now see me on, and I found somebody who was very loud, reminded me very much of, of my roots, a Texan, uh, who was screaming, 9-11 was an inside job. Of course, you know that man to be the wonderful Alex Jones. It was through him that I found out about Ron Paul, and then I knew who I needed to do my research into for my project. One thing led to another. I started reading, I started listening, I started watching, and days and days went by when I was doing nothing but watching Alex Jones. I know, forgive me, I have sinned as well. He's a minarchist as well. Um, but... Just utterly fantastic thoughts that were running through my head. I thought I was a constitutionalist before, but I didn't understand a damn word of it until I started digging and reading for myself and going through some of the sources that Alex Jones brought me to. And then I read... Uh, I forget what I read from Ron Paul first. Maybe it was an article or maybe just a snippet out of one of his books, but it just struck with me that Maybe our foreign policy isn't what it cracked up to be. Maybe 9-11 maybe wasn't an inside job, but there's something fishy going on. So I turn around, and when it comes time to turn on the project, I bring up questions about 9-11 and how, you know, towers shouldn't have done this, or where the hell's the plane for this, and, and all that sort of sort of stuff. And it blew everyone's mind. They didn't they've never heard anything like it before. And I received immediate backlash from the teachers and from some of the students. They called me a conspiracy theorist, a nut, uh, and some even threatened to kick my ass, and they never did. But I was then labeled as the one who was going to go against the teachers and try to bring some real history into the class, some real knowledge. So every time they had a question about something in the textbook, I'd go and look it up somewhere else, come back and say, hey, that's right or that's wrong to the point where my teacher started to despise me for it. So through Ron Paul, uh, I got involved with the the more conservative-leaning, constitutionalist-leaning, libertarian portion of, of my life. And that spanned from right around 2007, 2008, uh, up until about 2011. It was in that time period I uh, worked on a channel, uh, youtube.com slash brodicus, uh, kind of one of my namesakes, a little nickname kind of fun thing I like to throw around for anything on the internet. And I focused that content with Alex Jones content, with New World Order conspiracies, 9-11 conspiracies, uh, and Ron Paul speeches in particular. 
So that's that's all it was. And I was getting thousands and thousands and thousands of views, uh, especially whenever we hit the debates. Uh, my God, my ratings shot up, and I had I was getting close to 500,000 views, I think, at one point. Next thing I know, uh, I get some emails. Didn't concern me too much initially, but it was from the FBI saying, hey, we've received some concerns that you're putting up content that's questionable. I ignored it. I was like, the fuck they got on me? I ignored it. And I was also doing live streams at the time through Vocal.com and then, more recently, Spreecast.com. A couple of weeks later, I go to take a look at my channel, go to upload a video. It's all gone. Poof. Out of my hands. I no longer have control of it. The FBI took it and scrapped it. I sent a few emails, tried to get some information as to why they did it. Ultimately, I came up empty. I didn't push hard enough. Frankly, I was pissed. I started reading and digging. I heard about this Lou Rockwell guy, again, through the Alex Jones show, and I started reading. And I went to the Lou Rockwell blog. Found more Ron Paul, and I heard about a guy named Tom Woods. Kind of a little-known guy. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Of course, I'm being facetious here. And through Tom Woods, I got to Bob Murphy. Through Bob Murphy and Adam Kokesh, then, I got to Robert Higgs. And through them, I got to Murray Rothbard. And as soon as 2012 hit, I was so hardcore into Rothbard, I read as much as I could of him. And I started out primarily with The Ethics of Liberty and Foreign Liberty, reading them many, many times over. There's still things that, while I understand the core concepts, i got to go back and get the details again and again. That's why I love my nook over here. I've got all the Rothbard books that are out there that are available uh, through the Mises website, uh, Mises.org. Please check it out if you haven't. Um, you will not regret it. Uh, so, I then started up a new channel with the name Liberationus Republicae. Uh, granted, that was when I was still kind of partway into Rothbard, I wasn't quite sure about this whole libertarian thing, about this whole market anarchy thing. So I was still a little bit statist. You know, I was minarchist towing the line of anarchism. Uh, so Liberationus Republicae is Latin. And roughly translated, it means liberation of the republic. So I was, you know, hoping, you know, rah, rah, small government. We still need a government for this, that, and the other thing. Little did I realize that after I would continue reading and continue understanding the logical uh, progression that Mises and Rothbard really used, that I realized that the state no longer was necessary. So, I used a lot of content out there that wasn't mine, but it was in the comments, or at least that's, you know, how I was able to pick up some of the videos. Now I'm doing completely original content using inspirations from Mises and from Rothbard, uh, but I'm putting it all together myself. I've got my own intros, I've got my own outros. I record everything myself, or if I don't record it myself, I work so closely with the people that I'm with that do the videos with me that there's so much of me in there, it's ridiculous. Uh, now, being a fully recovered statist and being able to focus on volunteerism, truly free markets and the non-aggression principle, I can pretty well see how free society can be achieved if we just try to make it happen. And that's the big goal. I want to equip people with the knowledge that you know, we don't need perfect knowledge going forward. We don't need to have an answer for every question. When we focus it all on the non-aggression principle and a protection of property rights, and the fact that there are property rights, uh, just inherently with you being you, with you being born, you being a human being, then true freedom can be achieved. Maybe not in my lifetime, but in a lifetime down the road. So, Liberation of Republic I, I've done a series uh, called Mises Quote of the Day. I do a series uh, called Liberty Chat, which is kind of, eh, I might scrap that little series. And I've got my namesake uh, list, and then Tyranny Spotlight, which I've used to bring up stuff like the minimum wage, uh, to uh, talk about people like Chris Kyle, the heroic sniper uh, who killed a record number of people or whatever, dirtbag, who cares? and a most recently superstar hit video on my channel, Anarcho-Communism Debunked, uh, that uh, the wonderful Mr. Shanklin has gone ahead and decided to promote a little bit ago, and I've seen the numbers climb again. So thank you, sir. Uh, you are very much appreciated. 
I've also done things with a local host called Michael Evans. Uh, he's in northern Missouri. Uh, he's famous for America's Voice Now. Many of you probably don't know him. I didn't know about him until I heard, got a call from him. He said, hey, you've been recommended by 300 people who listen to my show as an up-and-comer in the, in the Liberty-type movement. How would you like to come up to my neck of the woods? We have a radio conference going on up here. And you'll have dinner with me and some of the other hosts in the area, Vince Finelli and Sam Bushman being some notables. Uh, and we'll talk strategy and, you know, we'll take you under our wing and see what you want to do. So I went up there. Just a wonderful exhibit, wonderful conference. I uh, got to meet a whole lot of cool people. And then got to sit down with Michael Evans and, and all of them statists, unfortunately, minarchists, uh, the lot of them. But really nice people, really down to earth. Uh, and I've started to really turn Michael Evans a little bit more towards anarchy. Uh, just by throwing him some Rothbard and throwing him some Mises, stuff that he really hasn't read before. Um, not tooting my own horn here, but you know, it's just been a blast to do that sort of thing. Um, and he's given me an invitation to pop on his show whenever I see fit. And that's just exciting to me. I mean, a, a young kid like me, I'm only 22 years old. I've only been involved in this movement for about five, six, seven... Uh, about seven, eight years. And I've already gone through this transformation. It just blows my mind. So again, Mr. Shanklin, Michael Shanklin, uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart for being so willing to put up with me uh, and help me out with this. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just huge uh, to have this kind of support in the, in the movement. I'm not trying to get all, you know, sentimental and, you know, lovey-dovey feely, but to get this kind of recognition from a big-time player that Michael Shanklin is, it's just, I'm just out of my mind with excitement. I might not show it because I'm not the most expressive person on camera, but if you get to know me, my God, you can see me jumping out of my skin right now. So, a little bit of history, a few excuses I'm going to make. My channel, both my channels, I have suffered a lot of... A lot, due to various things that have come up in the last year, including performing in uh, operas over the last couple of years at the local university. I am a vocal performance major, so if you need somebody to sing for you, come to me. Um, getting, I've been getting my parents moved into a new house uh, that I'm living with them now, helping them pay the bills while they get their, get get on their feet in, uh, in Cape Girardeau here. Michael Shanklin breathes some new life in me. And is, he's inspired me to use any available moment to plan, shoot, edit, and create new content. And speaking of which, again, uh, Mr. Randall Parker Jr. was so instrumental in helping me find a quality editing software uh, for free, mind you, that I can actually do this uh, from a new computer setup that I'm working on since my Linux computer is kind of taking a shit. Not due to Linux, of course, because the, the parts are just old. It's a seven-year-old computer. And not much you can do with that. So... Hopefully, I plan to just regain my chops, regain what it is to get involved with this movement, uh, at least on a on this kind of basis. Uh, and then, who knows, maybe I'll start doing the weekly webcast through the Voluntary Virtues Network. Maybe I'll do my own stuff on Spreecast again. I don't know. Um, I did have a second channel called Libertarian Entertainment TV, started by one of my friends and I. Uh, there was a, a band in the group, uh, in the in the local area, called Dream Thought. All of them are anarchists. All of them are just completely nuts, and they're kind of a, a grunge, metal, punk, ska, whatever they feel like flavor of the day kind of thing. Um, and they got to play at a, at a local charity event, and we sat down and have an interview. If you want to check that out, go to youtube.com slash libertarian music TV. Kind of shorten the URL a little bit. Or just search libertarian entertainment TV. There's only three videos, but check it out. It's a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. Uh, you'll really enjoy it if you're into uh, kind of vulgar, over-the-top humor, if that's your sort of thing. Uh, and I have actually just given that away to Michael Shanklin because I haven't done shit in that thing for about a year plus. And that's no way for channel uh, or any portion of the movement to be. And I want that to be focused on entertainment, on music, on original content even. So if there's anybody who's interested in that, contact Michael Shanklin. See what you can do to help. If there's any content that you want to put forward for it, or if you want to take it over, let him know. Because God knows he's got enough on his plate right now. 
that taking on another project probably is going to make him lose his damn mind. Um, so just let him know or really email me uh, if you're interested in, in helping me out with my stuff. Um, again, the purpose of my channel uh, is to educate people on what a free society can look like without the gun of g government uh, being pointed at them. It's really that simple. There's many topics I believe I can cover pretty well, and we'll be more than happy to track down a guest or two who can help me with my topics I really can't do well. Uh, with all that said, I rely heavily on you. I would ask that you guys flood my inbox on, you inbox on YouTube, on my Facebook page, and in my email. All that's going to be in the description down below, and I may even, if I get fancy, put it right down this direction or up here or on the side somewhere. I'm going to try to put it on the screen for you, see if I can get that rolling again. Um, also, I just talked with uh, Mr. Park, Randall Parker Jr., uh, but if anybody else has uh, some additional skills in video editing, uh, in, in, in sound quality, anything like that, or anybody's got any extra equipment that they're not using uh, that you know they can give to me, well, not give, I will purchase it from them for a very reasonable market price uh, you know, in a good barter situation. Uh, that way we can increase the quality of my stuff to the best it can be for you guys. Uh, so let me know what you want. Let me know what I can do for you. Uh, let me know exactly what you want the show to be. I'm always looking for people who are willing to guest host, who are willing to, you know, just be a, a, a bounce back board. As you can tell, it's kind of awkward. I don't like to do just sitting and talking and ranting. That's not my thing. Give me a conversation. Give me face to face with individuals. That's where I thrive. And I think you'll see a little bit more of my personality come out through those. So, uh, gosh, I still got to find a way to fill a couple of minutes. Oh, fuck it. Michael, I hate your rules. It's going to be a little under 30 minutes. Suck it for now. <laughs> so, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you next time. This is Adam Brod of Liberationist Republicae on the Voluntary Virtues Network, saying peace and love and liberty.